All right, our next venture in InDesign is fractions. How do we manage fractions? Now, there are the simple ways and the hard ways of doing everything. Which do we prefer? Quick way. Quick and simple. Now, there are some fractions that don't act nicely. Let me give you a fraction. I'm going to just type one in down here underneath the, the last item here. I'm going to type in one eighth cup, okay? So I have a quarter cup, a half cup, and I have this eighth cup thing. Now, <clears throat> these may or may not be part of a paragraph style. Let me bring up my paragraph styles. I think I might have closed it. Now, I have no plus sign, so this is really is like, okay, no problem. Um, it doesn't recognize fractions as part of, it doesn't appear to recognize it as part of the uh, paragraph style, but then again it might. I just typed in new letters. I didn't change anything. I didn't change a font, a point size, or anything. So when you type in new characters, it's not going to put a plus sign there. So let's see if it is built into the paragraph style. Let's investigate. You ready? Let's double click on this. So this uh, paragraph style, I double click on it, and let me see if there's anything in here that says fractions. Looking down along here, no, there's nothing that says fractions. Fractions are an open type feature, however. So if you know that fractions are an open type feature, then you can deal with it. Okay, so I'm looking for the word open type. There it is, open type feature. Four items up from the bottom. Now, I can tell it to use fractions. Simple as that. I'm going to hit preview and I'm going to see if it changes. Darn it, it doesn't change. It doesn't override the fractions that you already, or the, the, the numbers that you already have built. Okay, that's the bad part. So I'm going to hit OK. Like, darn it, it didn't change that to a fra small fraction. Now, if I type one quarter again, excuse me. Yeah, I'll get it right here in a second. One, that quarter, space. Darn it, it still didn't do it. Oh, this is really frustrating. Now, sometimes in certain typefaces, that fraction doesn't even exist. But in this one, we know it exists because before I did this demo, you saw I had fractions up here. So I'm a little confused as to why it's not changing. Now, this may indeed be what is called a glyph. Okay, a glyph. So I'm going to put my cursor before the word cup. And I'm going to go to type, and about six items down is the word glyphs. I'm going to see what glyphs this particular typeface has. The glyphs panel is different for every typeface. Every font you load, you have a different set of glyphs. Some have more than others. So here's the glyphs panel. And with this particular typeface, I have a lot of, I even have Arabic. I've got all sorts of glyphs to choose from. Holy Moses, look at all these glyphs. Wow. Well, all I need is the fraction. So I'm looking and I see fractions right here. Do you see an eighth of an inch in there? Do you see a sixteenth of an inch? Or four fifths? No. But I do see some of the common ones. So that was a quarter. I double click on the quarter and it puts in the recently used glyphs and it also inserts it in the copy. Then I can delete the other one. Now if you want to not work as hard, you can highlight the type before you tell it to make it a glyph and then double click on the glyph and it will just replace it. Okay? So some of the glyphs that come with the open type font that you're using are there as far as fractions go. This is not building fractions, it's just finding them. Now with this 1 8 cup, we have to build this fraction. Now this part gets a little frustrating because you have to really dig for things. Now I'm going to look into the glyphs panel and see what other characters I have to work with because it is very, uh, uh, what are these, fractions, are very specific as to how they're built as far as uh, that slash. It's not just any slash. So I'm trying to see if it has 
a slash all by itself. And yes, I have to go through the Arabic stuff and the Russian stuff and the Spanish stuff and you know, whatever other languages that these things are used. And I'm just looking, ah, there it is. I float my cursor over it and it tells me the third item down in this little yellow box. I can't move my mouse, but you see that little yellow box? It says name fraction slash. Okay, that's an actual fraction slash. So let me put my cursor right before the word cup, and I'm going to insert that fraction slash. Okay? Oh my gosh, mine had an A. Do you see that? Oh my gosh, I'm so lucky, but let's pretend it doesn't. Let's pretend this is two, uh, two eighths. That doesn't make any sense. Two eighths is what? A quarter? Let's make this three eighths. Do you see three eighths in there? Oh, where'd he go? Gosh, look at how how much we have to travel to find this stuff. Woo! We had to go through. You do have three eighths. Do I have three eighths? Gosh darn it! How about uh, seven eighths? Is seven eighths in there? Gosh darn it! How about seven sixteenths? Let's do seven sixteenths. I tell you, this this font is a great font because it has a, some great glyphs. Usually. You'll run into, your, your situation will be that you don't have hardly any glyphs possibly with your typeface. Okay, so I have a third, two-thirds, one-eighth, three-eighth. So you notice, too, that glyphs, oftentimes the fractions are parked separately. Quarter, half, and that, those are kind of parked near the top because people use those the most. But one-third, two-thirds, these other ones, it, they may be there, they may not be there, but you may have to look further down. Now, what's the difference between this symbol and the fraction symbol. I just went on the computer and I typed under the, you know, the question mark key right by the shift key, I typed a backward slash or forward slash rather. What's the difference? Do you see the visual difference? One is not a fraction. Okay, so I'm going to delete those. Using this key that's found on the same key as a question mark is incorrect. Now, for the 7 sixteenths, I'm going to have to build that part as well. So do I just simply type in 7 here and then sixteenths here? That doesn't look right either. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if the glyphs panel has a small number 1 and a small number 7. And this would be a small number 1, possibly superscript, and a small number 7, subscript. If it doesn't, this is where we have to really work hard at building the fraction. This could be, you know, it takes a while. Now, the cool thing about building a fraction is once I make it, I will copy and paste it and use it again. I don't build these more than once. It's too much. So I'm trying to find a little number one and a little, maybe possibly a number seven. Yes, I'm going through all the German and the, all the... We got We have to travel the world over to find it. Okay, I see the one right there. It's a superscript one. So let me put my. Let me delete that. Oh, it's well. It's not even. I don't even want a one. I want a seven. But you can see that when I double click on the one, it's a fraction one. Let me see if I can highlight and type a seven in. Oh, oh, it didn't work. Oh, and I have no seven. I've gone through there, and I have no sixteen. Oh, this is so frustrating. Now, what I am going to do is I'm going to, I'll have to manually build this. I have the right, um, I have the right glyph for the fraction symbol, but now I'm going to have to click on the 7. I'm going to close glyphs because it's clearly not in there. And this 7 is going to be superscript. There he is. There's the superscript option. And the 16 is going to be subscript. Now I'm going to copy this and I'm going to put it next to the other fraction. And let's compare. Do those look the same? No. Oh, fractions, they're the bane of our existence. They really, really are frustrating. So when I'm building a fraction, I have to, I do copy and paste it next to an actual fraction that is built into, the, into this font. And I start to play around with the size. I took it down a little bit because that's definitely, this was definitely bigger than that. So I took it down one point. There's a baseline shift here, which means it might move up. Maybe I'll move it up a half of a point. 
And this is a little heavier. This number one is more heavy than the seven. Now, if I'm using a good typeface, I will have a medium and a bold, and I'm just using some generic typeface, so I don't have bold or anything else loaded. Now, I have cheated before. You guys want to know how I cheat a little bit? I have added a slight stroke to my letters to get that to look like it belongs to the other, the rest of the family. Okay. Now I'm going to do the same thing with 16. It's a little too big. I'm going to take it down. It's a little too low. So I'm going to, this is the baseline shift right here. I'm going to shift it up probably two and a half points. You want it to align the baseline the other guy. I'm going to put a 0.1 stroke on it. Maybe even a little less than a 0.1. Let's do a 0.5. 0.05 rather. There we go. So this part, this part is yucky, for lack of a better word. It's just yucky. I also will kern stuff. Let's do kerning, not tracking. I'm like, okay, woo! I'm done! This took forever. Now, what I'd like to do is be able to copy this and put it into the glyphs panel let me see if I can paste it in here. Let's see if it, I, I hit Command V, nothing happened. I wonder if there's a way to make this a glyph. So I have it selected. I wonder if I can right click on it and see if there's a way to make it a glyph. Now I have not done this before, I have to admit. So I'm, I'm trying something new. Is there a way to make this a glyph? Add to glyph set, no. Shoot. New glyph set means a whole other set. Add to a glyph set means, I, I would assume, it's, I'll try add to glyph set, but it's all grayed out. Like, darn it. Recent glyphs delete, oh. There probably is a way to turn that into a glyph. I just haven't figured it out yet. So in, if that's the case, and I'm gonna use that fraction over and over again, I will copy it and paste it where it needs to be. In paragraph style, set up a what? Set up a new style for each combination of letters. Yes. Um, this would actually be character styles. Because in the rest of the paragraph, I don't want to change the rest of these letters. So, yeah. You would create an appropriate character style. This is kind of nuts, too, because each of these characters are different from the other. The 7 is different from the 16 because it's got a baseline shift that's up. The 16 is, and it's superscript, the 17. The 16 is subscript, which is a completely different character format, and the baseline shift is down. So yes, I could go into character formatting, or character styles, rather. Um, keep clo closing them out, pardon me. And I should probably highlight my 7, create a new character style, and call it top number for fraction hit OK, and then highlight the 16 and create a paragraph style and call it bottom number for fraction. Now those of you guys who are taking mathematics right now, what is the correct term for this top number and what's the correct term for the bottom number in a fraction? Numerator and denominator. Numerator and denominator. God, you guys learned something and it stuck. Congratulations. Good job. All right, so fractions can absolutely be the bane of our existence when we don't have it as a glyph. And did it take a lot of time to make that? It sure did. I wish there was an easier way. But when you have these odd fraction numbers like this, you, you, you've got to build them. Now, I, I really want to say that as a, as a glyph, and that's I guess I need to go online and search for how to save a special character set as a glyph and see if I can find that. But for now, I just copy and paste it. All right, so we just talked about building fractions or using the glyphs for fractions. And we have another question, yes? Um, yeah, um, 